Hi again, and welcome to Lasso Freire today, where we answer your frequently asked questions. With us today, we have a new face. We have Dr. Thomas Christopher, who's one of the UE SRC scientists based at the Monstrat Volcano Observatory, and he's now leading the scientific team at Lasso Freire. Hi, TC. Good afternoon, Stacey. Good. Um, so with the ongoing eruption, we are going to have a rotation of scientific teams coming in and out of St. Vincent. That's quite normal. And so TC is our new scientific lead. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the new team, TC, and what you guys have been up to? Yeah. Um, as you said, we, we're rotating staff in and out. And because we're, in terms of expertise, we're one layer thin. So whoever is on the ground at any point in time here, would, would be um, bringing a different set of expertise with them while they're here. So currently, um, one of the team members, um, Dr. Kameo Hari, she's an expert in um, deformation. So she's she's been doing a lot of work in trying to get the EDM network up and running. And I'm pleased to say that we actually got a hit from the target yesterday from one of the surveyors while we were on the summit. Um, she's also trying to beef up the GPS network making sure that the GPS network is where she needs it to be. Um, also, we have Ms. Monique Johnson, who is um, a, a very um, important member of the Volcano Ready project. And she's been quite useful in terms of um, help, helping us trying to get the observatory where it is, doing all the paperwork and that sort of stuff. And one of the things we're trying to um, put in place is a procedures list, basically for, for staff. So for instance, if there's a, an experienced person here and there is an event, they can refer to that procedures and know exactly what steps to take and who to call and what to say to them. So she's been quite useful in that. And, and of course, uh, the technician, Mr. Um, Gart Manet, um, he's replaced um, Mr. Lloyd Lynch and um, Mr. Um, Ian um, Juman. So we've got a good team um, on the ground and we're we're trying to, to do a good job. And last but not least, um, I do measure some gas as well. So I think at the moment, we've got a strong team for deformation, the gassing and technician, and just to um, get the um, paperwork up the, for the observatory and get the observatory where we need it to be. That's great. And, and I know that you also continue to be supported by um, NEMO and their technicians, as well as, of course, you have the support of the uh, scientists and other staff based both in Trinidad and in Montserrat as well. So one of the things that we've been um, noticing or seeing is that the, the dome is growing laterally. Can you talk a little bit more about what exactly that means? Is it is it no longer growing as high? What, what does that mean? Yeah, um, that is something that we noticed over the past week and a half or so that there's the lateral motion has um, actually um, picked up or increased relative to the vertical motion. And basically what the issue is, is the space it has to grow in dictates how it grows. So because we have the, um, the old dome acting as a buttress behind of it, and the new dome as another buttress in front of it, it's more or less squeezed mm. um, in the east-west direction. So basically not all growth would be predominant and then we have the vertical growth. I think what we've noticed is that the vertical growth would have slowed down some bit and, and the growth is more laterally extensive than not so much um, vertical. But it does not say that the extrusion rate has dropped. It's still coming up, but it's just um, being distributed slightly differently to how it was a few weeks ago. And so it's still interacting with the old dome. I know one of the concerns that people have is that um, with, the, with the new dome, in contact with the old dome? Is there a change in activity? Is that somehow dangerous? Can it affect the old dome? Um, yeah, I, yeah, that's a good question. The, what we notice is that there's steaming um, along the contact with the two domes. And what I think is causing that is that the, there's, there was a lot of vegetation on the old dome. And I think that vegetation is being burnt off by the, the heat generated by the new dome. We also noticed quite a bit more steaming in the old fumarole area, which is in the old dome. And we think uh, there are two possibilities, either that it's driving steam off from the, um, from the groundwater and putting more steam into the actual emissions of the old dome, or it's actually interacting with the old dome. In order for me to 
to answer the question, I need to take a gas measurement from the old dome and see what the gas composition is and see if it's different to the new dome. Mm -hmm. So I can't say which, I can't say if it's one or both, but there's definitely a lot more steaming coming from it. So I would suggest, or I would think that, okay, there's definitely groundwater being introduced into that fumarole, but you could actually have gases as well from the, um, the new years into that fumarole. Right, and I know that's your area of expertise. So is that what you're going to be doing in the coming um, coming days, coming weeks? You're going to be doing more gas measurements and that kind of thing? Yes, that's that's the plan. Um, as long as I'm here, I'll try and do as much gas measurement as possible. Um, I've got a number of techniques which I use to measure gas. But also what we, we're trying to do is to get the, um, the EDM um, um, campaign up and running because it's something that could be done very quickly because it's you don't have to go up onto the mountain to do it so um hopefully if we can get those measurements done every day then we can develop a, a proper baseline mm -hmm. so if in the future they don't start to to put stress on the actual crater wall it should be easier for us to see it because we know what the baseline is and what the noise within that baseline would be Okay, I got it. Um, the other thing as well, people have been been noticing, or we've, it's been reported that we have more earthquakes happening. Is that something that people should be concerned about? And these earthquakes, obviously, are volcanic earthquakes related to La Soufre. Is that are we really having more earthquakes? Or are we just recording more earthquakes? Should people be concerned? Um, it could be. It could be a function of both. Um, as as most people would have known that we um, since January 1st, there's a lot more instruments um, operating on the island than there were um, at the end of um, last year. So it could be a function of that we're seeing more events or there are actually more events happening. If there are more events happening, it's not um, unusual because you would expect to see that as an eruption unfolds. Um, what is um, the events are quite tiny, um, not the field teams, or any, anyone who's working with us have ever felt any of these events on the summit. So I would think that they're, they're not much cause for concern at the moment, but there are definitely more of them at the moment. But it could be a function of we, that we're able to see them better or there's actually more of them. Okay. But there's no cause for concern at the moment. Good, well, that's, that's good to know. All right, TC, well, thanks a lot for the update and we wish you, the team, all the best and we'll talk to you again next week. And we're just reminding right. everyone that uh, the public is still prohibited from visiting the crater of La Soufre. It's very dangerous at this time and that NEMO and the UESRC remain the official sources of information for updates on the La Soufre eruption. So thanks again and bye-bye. Yeah, bye, Stacey. Bye.